guys and welcome back to Reading Club. Today I'm going to read you Dirty Birdie Worms, the third story, Rubbish. Chapter 1, Rumble, Rumble, Screech, Snort. Something was making a noise outside Bertie's window. He sat up in bed. It was Saturday, Bertie's favourite day of the week. Saturday was bin day. He pulled back his curtains. Sure enough, there was the dis dust cart at the far end of the road. If he hurried, he would be just in time. Downstairs, he found Mum making tea in the kitchen. Morning, Bertie. She broke off and stared at him. What on earth are you wearing? Bertie looked at his outfit. He had on his dad's painting overalls, a woolly hat and a muddy pair of Wellingtons. True, the overalls were a bit big, but Bertie thought they were perfect for a bin man. It's Saturday, he said. I've got to help Ed with the bins. Oh, Bertie, not today, sighed Mum. Why not? It's the summer fair this morning. I don't want you getting filthy. That's why I'm wearing these, said Bertie, flapping his long sleeves. Anyway, said Mum, you're too late. I took the rubbish out last night. But I always do it, cried Bertie. Sorry, I forgot. You can do it next time. He stared after his mum as she disappeared upstairs with the tea. Wiffa looked up from a bone he was licking and blinked at him. How could you forget? asked Bertie. I always take the rubbish out on Saturdays. When he grew up, Bertie had decided he wanted to be a bin man. He wanted to wear an orange jacket and big gloves and ride on a truck that snorted like a dragon. Most of all, he wanted to work with mountains of messy, smelly, sticky rubbish. Bertie loved rubbish. He had piles of it under his bed. String, lolly sticks, rubber bands, sweet wrappers. It was amazing what people threw away. He began to rummage in the drawers. The bin, the bin man would be here any minute. Finally, he found what he was looking for, a large black bin bag. All he needed now was a few bits of rubbish to fill it. Bertie looked around. In went a dishcloth, a bar of soap, a tin of cat food and a pile of letters from Bertie's school. No one ever read them anyway. In went his dad's slippers, some carrots, yak, a cauliflower, double yak, and his sister's pony magazine. Rumble wumble. The dust cart was coming. Bertie scooted into the hall, dragging his bag behind him. Someone had left a pot of old flowers by the front door ready to throw out. Bertie scooped it into the bag with the rest. The wheelie bin stood on the pavement. Bertie climbed onto the front wall so he could reach to drop his bag in. He peered into the bin, sniffing the sweet smell of rotting vegetables. In one corner, he caught sight of something familiar. Wasn't that his chewing gum collection? Surely his mum hadn't thrown it out. He bent into the bin to try and rescue it. The jar was just out of reach of his fingertips. He'd have to... Ugh! Bertie toppled in head first. His face was wedged against something soft and squishy. Mm, help! Hello, mate, said a voice. Having a bit of trouble there? Strong hands pulled him out and set him on his feet. Oh dear, grinned Dad. Your mum's going to be pleased. Bertie inspected himself. He did seem to have got a bit messy. There was something sticky in his overalls that smelled like tomato ketchup. He brushed off some tea leaves and straightened his hat. A piece of tomato peel fell off. He held up the rescued jam jar to show Ed. I was looking for this. It's my chewing gum collection, he explained. I'm doing an experiment to see what happens when it gets really old. And what does it happen? Ed asked. It goes hard and it tastes really disgusting, said Bertie. Want to try a bit? No, thanks, smiled Ed. I've got to get on. Want to give me a hand? Yes, please, said Bertie. What? Want to try a bit? No, oh, sorry. I bought you an extra bag today. Bertie presented him with the rubbish he'd collected. Ed dropped the bag in the wheelie bin and Bertie pulled it to the waiting truck. He watched fascinated as the truck opened its metal drawers and swallowed up the rubbish. Ed held out a gloved hand and Bertie shook it. Good work, mate, said Ed. See you next week. He moved on down the road, whistling. See you, called Bertie. Chapter 2 Back in the house, Bertie whistled as he spooned dog food into Wiffa's bowl. He whistled as he took off his overalls and sat down to have some breakfast. Bertie, please, said Dad. What, said Bertie. I'm only whistling. 
That isn't whistling. You sound like you've got a puncture. Well, I've got to practice, said Bertie. How can I learn to whistle if you don't let me practice? Mum came into the kitchen looking flustered. Bertie, have you seen my flower arrangement? I left it by the front door this morning. Bertie paused with his finger in the peanut butter. By the door? Yes, it's for the competition at the summer fair. I spent hours walking on it and now it's disappeared. Are you sure you haven't seen it? Me? No. Are you all right? You look a bit pale. I'm fine, said Bertie, who suddenly wasn't feeling so well. He remembered the pot of old flowers by the front door. He remembered putting it in his rubbish bag. Uh-oh, the dust cart must have eaten it. Now he thought about that. Now he thought about it, his mum had been going on about the competition for weeks. First prize always went to Mrs Nicely next door, but this year Bertie's mum felt she stood a chance. Or she would have done. How was Bertie to know the flowers by the door were hers? They looked practically dead. He got her from the table and slided towards the door. Where are you going? asked mum. You haven't finished your breakfast. I just need to do something. And what's this all over Dad's overalls? Just ketchup. I had a bit of an accident. Bertie! But Bertie was making for the door. If he was going to get those flowers back, he would need to move fast. Chapter 3 Bertie bent over the handlebars of his bike, paddling at top speed. Pedaling at top speed. Whiffer scampered behind, trying to keep up. Maybe he was too late already, even if he caught up with the dust cart how was he going to get the flowers back edda told him all the dust carts took their loads to an enormous dump perhaps ed would let him hunt through the mountains of rubbish there bertie loved the idea of that but at the end of the road there were no sign of either ed or the truck by now it might be miles away he sped on towards the park and slammed on his bike brakes at the corner there, parked a hundred metres away, was the dust cart. Hey! called Bertie. Hey, wait a minute! The truck was starting to pull away. It got up speed, turned a corner and vanished out of sight. Bertie looked down at Whiffer, whose ears drooped in sympathy. He was sunk. Mum would scream. Dad would shout. He would be sent to his room for a million years. Bertie, is that you? called Mum as he crept in through the front door. No, answered Bertie. I want a word with you. Now. Bertie drooped into the kitchen. Where Mum, Dad and Susie were waiting for him. He could tell by their faces that he'd been rumbled. Where are my slippers? said Dad. Where's my pony weekly? asked Susie. What have you done with my flower arrangement? demanded Mum. Me? Why do I always get the blame? protested Bertie. It's not my fault if people keep losing things. Mum folded her arms. Look at me, Bertie. I want the truth. Did you touch those flowers? Bertie tried to look at his mum. I might have um, given them to someone, he mumbled. I told you, said Susie. Who? demanded Mum. Bertie tried to think of an answer. He wanted to tell the truth, but the truth was he'd given the flowers to a dust cart. By now, they were probably buried under six feet of cabbage and nappies. Cabbages and nappies. I gave them to Gran, he said with sudden inspiration. Gran, what on earth for? She likes flowers, said Bertie. She likes smelling them and stuff. Mum looked unconvinced. And when did you do this? This morning, said Bertie. I saw them by the front door and I thought... I'd take them to Grant to cheer her up. His family stared at him. Bertie had never given flowers to anyone before. On the other hand, he had been known to do all sorts of weird things. Mum's expression softened a bit. Well, it was not. It was a nice thought, Bertie, but I need those flowers back. They've got to be at the church hall by ten. I'll give Gran a ring. She picked up the phone. No, said Bertie desperately. I'll go round. It. She'll be quicker. She'll probably finish smelling them by now. Mum replaced the phone. All right, but you better hurry. If I miss this competition, you're in serious trouble. Bertie set off with Whiffer pad paddling beside him. At the end of the road, he sat down on a wall to think. Now what was he, go was he going to do? 
bringing Gran into it had only made things worse. Now Mom expected him to come back with a stupid flower arrangement. He stared gloomily at Woofer, who was sniffing around the garden behind him. The house was empty and the front garden overgrown with tall weeds. Suddenly Bertie had a brilliant idea. What was to stop him making his own flower arrangement? It would be easy. There were hundreds of flowers right here that nobody wanted. All he had to do was pick a handful, stick them in a pot, and enter it in the competition. If he took it to the church hall himself, his mom might never find out. Half an hour later, Birdie had put his plan into operation. The new flower arrangement had been safely delivered to the hall. He hurried home to tell his mom the good news. Chapter 4 the summer fair was in full swing when Bertie and his family arrived. He trailed round the stalls with Wither on his lead. There were stalls selling plants and homemade jam, but nothing to interest Bertie. For some reason, Wither kept whining and pulling him back to the table displaying the flower arrangements. Mrs. Nicely was standing by the table talking to Bertie's mum. I don't know what I'd do if I won again, she was saying. It'd be so... it'd be too embarrassing. I can imagine, said Bertie's mum. So which one is yours? Uh, the little vase of tiger lilies, said Mrs. Nicely, pointing to a towering display of yellow blooms. She lowered her voice and pointed, Can you believe someone actually entered that ghastly mess? Bertie stared at the ghastly mess. It was a cracked pot with dandelions, grass and twigs sticking out in all directions. In the middle was what looked like a dog's bone. Actually, said Bertie loudly, I think that's the best of them all. But Mum pulled him to one side. Bertie, where's my flower arrangement? I thought you said you gave it in. Um, I did, said Bertie. Luckily, at that moment, he was interrupted by one of the judges. Can I have your attention? We are about to announce... The results of the flower arranging competition, he boomed. Second prize went to I oh, sorry. Second prize went to Mrs. Nicely, who tried hard not to look disappointed. First prize went to Mr. Pye's bowl of roses. Finally, said the judge, the prize for the most original display. This year we felt one entirely beautifully captured our theme of wild nature. The judge held up a pot. It was Bertie's pot. The winner, he said, is Mrs. Burns. That's us, shouted Bertie excitedly. Wither barked and strained on his lead, trying to reach his bone. Mom looked at Bertie and then, in horror, at the scruffy pot of weeds the judge was holding. Bertie, that is not my flower arrangement, she hissed. No, a minute, Bertie. I tried to make, I uh, had to make a few um, changes. Go on, Dad whispered to Mom. They're all waiting. Mom stepped forward to collect a prize, her face a deep shade of pink. Tell me, said the judge, and I'm curious, what gave you the idea of using a bone? Most original. Mom shot a dark look at Bertie. I would want my son's idea, really. He can make a dog's dinner of anything. I've never been so embarrassed in all my life, moaned Mom on the way home. Mrs. Nicely looked as if she was going to explode. Bertie couldn't see what she was complaining about. After all, she wanted to win a prize, and she had. You would have thought she'd be grateful. In any case, things had worked out pretty well. His mom had won a gardening kit, which included a large pair of green gardening gloves. Bertie was wearing them now. They were the perfect thing for a bin man. That's the end of this book. If you liked my readings of it, please click many likes and subscribe reading club. I'll come back tomorrow with a new book. Bye, everybody.